Hello Eurovision friends, thank you so much for coming to my channel Eurovision Histories and also for subscribing. We're very close to 9000 subscribers and I couldn't be more happy. Thank you so much for spending the Eurovision season with me and with this channel. Today I want to have a look at the winners odds as they are at the moment because there has been quite some movement, some of which has to do with a guy from Finland we know very well from last year, but I'll talk about that in a minute. We will have a look at the winner's odds first, but then also at the odds for the top 10. So which countries do people believe are most likely to achieve a top 10 result? And then also the qualifying odds for the two semifinals. Now, before talking about the winner's odds, there are some observations, let's call them, I have made over the years. If you want to understand how I got these observations, watch my video, how do the odds predict the winner, which I published last week. Um, one of these is that the UK sometimes is a bit overvalued and Ireland as well because people betting are mostly from these two countries. Genres like rock and rap and stuff like that are a bit undervalued, which might have to do with the fact that most people betting at this point in time are actually Eurovision fans who prefer other genres. And then I also noticed an effect that countries that did well or very well the year before are a bit overvalued in the odds as well, like Spain last year or also uh, Ukraine last year, for example. So let's have a look at the winner's odds. I'm using, using EurovisionWorld.com again, the great website you can see there on the screen. I will compare the odds as they are at the moment to my last video on the winner's odds, which was on the 31st of March. So when I say a country decreased or increased, it's compared to the 31st of March. The arrows you see on the screen as well are very helpful as well, but these are the changes in the last 24 hours in the odds. So let's have a look. The lower bottom five, bottom six, seven have not changed that much, to be honest. We still have San Marino, Malta, Moldova, Portugal, as you see, has increased a little bit, but is still only in 33rd position. Albania as well, and Luxembourg has decreased a little bit. All of them have under 1% winning chance. However, this doesn't mean that they won't qualify or won't do well. It just means that people don't think they can win Eurovision, which I think is a little bit understandable for most of these songs. Azerbaijan, as you can see, in 31st position. Last time I did a video, they were in 27th, but in the last uh, 24 hours, they have increased a little bit. This is the first big change. Czechia in 30th place. Last time I did a video, they were in 35th position, so third to last. And then the pre-parties came and we saw that Aiko was able to perform the song much better than in the national final. And the odds increased a little bit. Again, these are winners' odds. So a few more people believe that Czechia might actually win the whole thing. I don't know how exactly. However, now it is going down a little bit again. I think there is a bit of an effect that people were like, wow, this is so much better than in the national final. But now, having seen a few pre-party performances, you actually notice it's good, it's solid, but it's not better than some of the other entries we have this year, which is why it might be decreasing a little bit again. Then we have Iceland in 29th position, which has been consistently going down in the odds. Uh, was 23rd last time I did a video and you just know that Basha Murat was supposed to be the representative, everyone expected that and then Hera Björk was selected and there still was a bit of money from when people believed Basha would be the representative. Now it is in 29th position, which I think is a reflection of its real chances, to be honest, to win Eurovision, even though I personally like this song. Then in 28th position, we have Germany and Isaac increasing a little bit. We were 29th last time, so not a big change. And this is actually a great point that one of my subscribers made to explain that these are the winner's odds and not predicting the result, the end result of the country, because Germany, the worst result we can achieve, and don't we know it from previous years, is 26th position and we're 28th in the odds. So these are really the odds for the winners. We're still under 1% winning chance at this point. So yeah, not a big change, to be honest. Then we have Poland and Luna going up a little bit. They were 30th last time, now they're 27th. Australia is actually a big change, well, relatively big change. They were 28th last time I did a video, now in 26th position. I think it's mostly other countries going down, like Iceland, rather than Australia going up. 
Denmark and Cyprus have been really consistent in these positions, uh, also under 1%, so not much has changed there. But then we have Serbia. This is actually quite a big change because Serbia was 18th in the last video that I did three weeks ago. Now they are 23rd and they had a 1% winning chance before and now it's under 1%. Again, for the win, this doesn't mean that Serbia will do badly in Eurovision. It just means that not a lot of people are convinced that it will win. Same thing for Latvia. And I mean, if you are a ballot at Eurovision, you have to be outstanding to really have a chance at winning the whole thing. And I just think that Latvia and Serbia might not have this extra spark that is necessary to really take it home. Now, Spain has increased quite a bit from 26th to 21st position. I think people just enjoyed the pre-party performances. However, we do have to remember that there is a jury that really cares about vocal performances. And uh, well, Nebulosa are fun, but the vocal performance is not something that will convince a lot of juries, I'm quite sure. Still under 1% winning chance, so that makes sense. Estonia, much better vocal performance, but still a song that the juries might not go for in a national language. But out there, a bit of a crazy entry, and so it makes sense that it's under 1%. However, we notice that 19th place, Slovenia is the first one with a 1% winning chance, so more than 1% winning chance, and before, we had that in the 22nd position already. So we see a bit of consolidation. And as we go further up in the odds, we see that people are consolidating around the top four, the top five. It's still a very open year, but more and more people believe that the winner will be from the current top five in the betting odds. So Slovenia and Raven in 19th place, they were 19th last time as well. So not that much has happened. This one, Georgia, surprises me quite a bit because I was really, really impressed by the performances in the pre-part. Well, I think it was, no, two performances. And both of them were flawless, amazing vocals. It's a fun, catchy song, but Georgia hasn't really moved, which is a bit surprising to me. What has moved is Armenia. Maybe, I mean, I have a bit of a Trenule tool feeling with this, where I think that the televoters might actually enjoy this much more than the average Eurovision fan does. So it makes sense that they have increased a little bit. Then we get to Austria and Sweden. Kalin has had some solid pre-party performances, but they weren't outstanding. And I think that Austria is actually in trouble for the qualification. We shall look at the odds for the semifinals in a minute. But I cannot see this win, to be honest. It's just too dated too nostalgic to really do it and there is not a lot of vocal performance to the song either um, and the juries won't like that so i don't really see austria winning sweden as i've said usually is a bit a little bit overvalued by the odds it does well every single year almost but being in 15th position for a swedish song in the odds is actually not great to be honest but I also don't really see Marcus and Martinez uh, winning. Sweden was in the top 10 last time I did a video. Yes, in 10th position with a 2% winning chance. Now in 15th position with a 1% winning chance. Now, the other country I said that sometimes gets overvalued a bit is the UK with Oli Alexander increasing in the last 24 hours. But the last time I did a video, it was in 12th position with a 2% winning chance and now it only has a 1% winning chance. I think it makes sense as well. I don't see this as a winning entry, but uh, some people still believe that it can because people have been betting on it a little bit. Then we have Lithuania and Sylvester Belt. I skipped it in the last video and people got a bit angry. Sorry about that. It's not that I don't have a law for this entry. I really like it and I listen to it quite a bit. It's just where it has to be. There's not that much to say about it, I think. I think 13th position with a 1% winning chance makes sense. When we look at the top 10 result, I might have a bit more to say. Finland in 12th position in the winner's odds. This is odd to me because I don't see this get any jury support, actually. I don't know which jury will vote for this with this vocal performance with so much relying on the staging this will have a great televote i'm sure and this will do well um, but i don't really see how people think this could win 
Then we have two countries with Norway and Ireland, rockier songs, heavier songs that have increased quite a bit. Last time I did a video, Norway was 15th, so three weeks ago, and Ireland was 16th. Now Norway is in 11th place, I think much more reflective of its actual chances than 16th. It is a very good song. I do think that people might not bet on it because it is just a bit too much maybe for the casual viewer and so people don't believe that it can win and then ireland i don't really understand why it is so high up i'm very happy for the irish eurovision fans to be honest because i know how it feels to be from a country that really doesn't do well for such a long time i don't see this win i think this could qualify and this could do well but i don't really see how bambi thug and ireland could actually do it because it is the kind of song that the juries really don't like a genre mix a heavier genre as well uh, one part of the song at least yeah not sure but happy for ireland that they are in the top 10. then we have belgium which has been switching positions with israel on and off over the last couple of days there was this performance in the voice of belgium with a real tv feed and i was a bit underwhelmed by that it was a bit too intense for me there were some vocal moments that were off so i kind of understand that it is decreasing a little bit last time it was in sixth place with a six percent winning chance so this has really gone down and now has a two percent winning chance some of the vocal performances in the pre-parties weren't that good so that might be why it's in ninth position israel as i always say is very hard to predict this year a lot of things could happen with this song uh, but it hasn't really moved in a very long time was ninth last time with a two percent winning chance and still is there kind of similar greece last time also had a three percent winning chance same position and i think it makes sense that it is where it is i don't think it's a very likely winner but it could i could see a scenario where everything aligns for marina satya and she does it in a way then and i have talked about this uh, entry and country a lot lately i know that because i love it and i am very happy that this has increased not the winning chance which was at four percent three weeks ago as well but at least one position mostly because belgium has gone down to be honest but um, it is now quite close to entering the top five actually and i th think sliman's vocal performance and the jury potential just makes this a possible contender for me as well i am doing my pro contra videos at the moment and i try to find contra arguments against uh, sliman winning and the main one i found was it's a ballad and it might be a bit generic but i found a lot of pro arguments i will publish that video quite soon then ukraine this has changed quite a bit 10 percent three weeks ago now it's at six percent so has decreased it was uh number two at some point with a very high winning chance and people are really growing off it a little bit or not believing that it can win anymore i mean it is a good song it could still do it i do think that it has the chance to win eurovision but i do also understand why people think that the other four songs that we will talk about in a minute might have more of a chance then we have Italy and Angelina Mango. I'll just show you the top four. 11% winning chance last time. She was at 14% winning chance. But here we see a bit of the consolidation. Before, the top five had a 65% winning chance put together. Now they're at 72%. So people are really consolidating around these five entries and more so actually the top four, Italy, Netherlands, Croatia, and Switzerland. Angelina Mango going down a little bit. I don't know whether it is because it has been consistently good and there haven't been any wow moments because we kind of expect her to be really good. I do think that she has a better chance than one of the countries we're going to talk about in a minute, but that's the way things go in the odds. Now in third position, and this of course is the big, big change, is that Jos Klein has really climbed the odds a lot. The Netherlands were fifth with a 10% winning chance three weeks ago. Now they are third with a 12% winning chance. And this might have to do with the fact that he met Kedia in, I think, in Helsinki. And they did some fun videos together. While just meeting Kedia doesn't mean that you have a better chance at winning Eurovision. Maybe he will get a few more points from Finland. 
However, what it shows is the genius PR that is behind him. I don't know whether it's his ideas or he has a great team, but the PR that the Netherlands and US Klein are doing is actually quite good. And this kind of warrants the increase in the odds more than just the fact that he met Kerrie. Because to have this idea to do a video with Kerrie and stay in the conversation, that is actually quite genius. And I think there might be more things coming during Eurovision week that they are trying to use to, you know, get people talking about the entry. Of course, it is the most successful on the charts, especially in the Netherlands, but also outside in Belgium and the Baltics. Lots of people are streaming the song. And so I think it makes sense that it has a 12% winning chance, even though I still believe that Italy has a bit of a better chance because Italy is more of a compromise for the juries as well. Then we have Croatia with Baby Lasagna. In my last video, uh, Croatia was first. However, only with a 17%, yes, 17% winning chance. Now Baby Lasagna has an 18% winning chance. So again, you see the consolidation there. And just the fact that the entire country of Croatia seems to be behind this entry. They did the dance performances. The performances on Dutch TV and also during the pre-parties were very good. He's consistently uh, improving. So I think it makes sense that he increased actually in the winning chance. And I think that he could increase a little bit more even because he has a good chance of winning Eurovision. And then in the first position, we have Switzerland, Nemo. Of course, with this great uh, Swiss TV performance and also great performances at the pre-parties, Nemo in Switzerland kind of convinced lots of people that they might actually do it. Before these performances, people were wondering whether they were able to perform the song in the way that it is performed in the studio version, and then they convinced us. So that is why Switzerland is now first in the odds with a 25% winning chance. I am not sure where the 25% might be a bit high because there are some aspects. You will see that in the Pro Contra video coming out soon where I think that Switzerland might suffer a little bit. But anyway, I think it should be number one. It is the most impressive song and performance at the moment, I think. But we shall see how they stage it as well. That is very important. Well, these are my thoughts on the winner's odds. Let's have a look at the top 10 odds as well. So here they are. You can see there's a lot of correlation between the winner's odds and these odds. So I will focus on the things that are different. You can see here Iceland quite low, 4% chance of making the top 10. The other countries quite similar to the winner's odds. Portugal is a bit higher with a 6% chance of making the top 10. I do think if Portugal makes it to the final, then the juries enter and could give this quite a boost and maybe help it into the top 10. Luxembourg kind of same thing. It's a kind of song that juries might go for, but Luxembourg has to qualify first. What else is surprising to me? I think Spain could have a bit of a better chance if this really convinces televoters. It might do relatively well. Again, Georgia kind of surprises me because I think this is the female-led pop song that will do best. This is the kind of song that the jurors will go for because of the great vocal performance, because it is a standard pop song. So I would put Georgia a bit higher, to be honest. Serbia in 19th position, 18%. That makes sense. Germany, I mean, yeah, he has a great vocal performance. The juries might go for this. We shall see the staging. I mean, 18% chance of making the top 10, which would be the best German result since 2018. Surprising to me. I don't know what you think. Let me know in the comments. And this is also surprising because Ireland is actually higher in the winner's odds than they are in the top 10 odds. So the people supporting the entry might be betting on it to win and really believe that it could win, but less people believe that it will actually make the top 10, which is interesting and kind of contradictory but the, it's not the same people betting anyway so and it also shows a little bit how overvalued the uk and ireland might be in the winner's odds because people just want to bet on their own country maybe that could be an explanation finland i said is too high in the winner's odds here i think it's actually a bit too low because this could get a great televote result and screech into the top 10 
Same thing for uh, Armenia a little bit. Austria, 30% of making the top 10. Norway, I think this should be higher as well. I do think that they have a good chance of making the top 10 with this out there entry. I don't think they will win, but they will get a good result, I'm quite sure. Same thing for Lithuania, actually, should be a bit higher. And then the top 10 are basically the same as the winner's odds, except for Sweden being a bit higher. I do think they have a chance at making the top 10 more so than winning. Uh, yeah, everything else kind of makes sense. You have Greece, France, Netherlands, Croatia, Ukraine, Italy, Switzerland. I mean, if people believe that they could actually win, there is a good chance that a lot of people will like the songs and vote for them. But you see the Netherlands still a bit lower here than the songs that they overtook in the winner's odds. Maybe these odds are not updated as regularly and they might go up a bit more uh, soon. But you can see very close together, Switzerland 78%, Italy 77%, Ukraine 76 Croatia 76 Netherlands 75 So it is a very open year, I do believe. And I mean, and kind of incredible too that 22%, 23%, according to the odds, there is a chance that Switzerland or Italy don't even make it to the top 10, which for Switzerland, if people really don't get the song or need too long to get into it, makes sense. And for all of the songs, kind of, there is a scenario where people just don't get it and won't vote for it. Now, a quick look at the semi-finals. Here you can see that Iceland, Moldova, Azerbaijan, Portugal, unfortunately, which was qualifying before, and Slovenia, also quite sad about that, are predicted not to qualify by the odds, whereas Australia and Ireland are now in the top 10 and are predicted to qualify. I think Ireland makes sense. Australia, I think we have to look at the staging first. If we lose Slovenia and Portugal, I will be very, very sad. I do think that maybe Cyprus or Luxembourg are actually in a bit more trouble as well than these odds would suggest. The rest, I think Croatia is definitely qualifying Ukraine to Lithuania with all the countries in the semifinal, especially, and Finland too with a 100% televote semifinal. So yeah, makes sense. But a few changes in the positions 8 to 13 with Portugal and Slovenia now not making it anymore. Let's look at the other semifinal. Here, Czechia, Malta, San Marino, Latvia, Albania, and Denmark are predicted not to qualify, which makes sense. I don't think it makes sense that Georgia is um, predicted to barely qualify. Then we have Estonia, Austria, as I've said, I think 81% is too high. I think they're in a bit of trouble, but everything else kind of makes sense. I do think Netherlands will qualify, Switzerland will qualify, Greece will qualify. So yeah makes sense to me. I think I don't think Belgium is in trouble for qualification. It's still a good song and a good performance, but I don't really see it winning any more. These are my thoughts on the odds as they are at the moment. Let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree with me or with the odds. And uh, do subscribe to this video. I will do odds updates regularly as things change. So I hope this was interesting for you. And then maybe I'll see you for my next video. Also remember to vote in the Eurovision Knockout. We have uh, Switzerland facing Croatia and Italy facing Lithuania. So they are waiting for your votes for who will make it to the final of the Eurovision knockout. I'll see you soon and bye-bye.